Welcome to this video lecture on summary statistics. After we draw a sample, we like to use the sample to tell us something about the population. And to do this, we like to summarise the information in the sample in some way. We do this by calculating some measure that describes the sample. And anything that we calculate using sample data is called a statistic. And if the statistic that we calculate summarises the data in some way, we call it a summary statistic. So a sample average is an example of a summary statistic. The first thing we typically do with a sample is that we calculate a measure of location to tell us typically how large are the numbers in the sample. We use the word location to mean where are the numbers located on the number line, because this is a measure of how large the numbers are, how far they are away from zero, how big are they. So a measure of location simply means an average. And there are different ways that we can calculate an average. The usual way we calculate an average is by using the mean or the arithmetic mean. And this simply means that we add together the numbers in the sample and divide by how many numbers there are. And this gives us the sample mean. The sample mean is a very useful measure of location because it uses the total of all the numbers. It adds all the numbers together, divides by how many numbers there are. It's a bit like taking a little bit from the larger numbers and adding it to the smaller numbers until the numbers are all the same. So the mean, if you like, expresses how big the numbers would be if they were all the same, if the total was shared out equally among all the numbers. But that's not the only way we can represent an average. Sometimes we have a set of numbers and they're nearly all exactly the same. And in cases like that, we use the mode. The mode means, if you like, the most fashionable number in the data set. For example, suppose we want to express the average number of legs on a dog. Well, nearly all dogs have exactly four legs. So the sensible answer is four, which is the mode. There may be some dogs who have had accidents and have only three legs. And so if we added together all the legs and divided by the number of dogs, we might get a number like 3.97, but that's not a very useful number and doesn't tell us anything very sensible. So where we have many numbers that are exactly the same, the mode is a very useful measure of location. Another measure of location we sometimes use is the median. The median means the one in the middle. Let's say we have a class of students and the class includes one billionaire. And let's say we want to calculate the average wealth of all the students in the class. If we use the mean and add up the wealth of all the students and divide by the number of students, that will make it appear that the typical level of wealth in the class is very high because that one billionaire's wealth will be such a large number that it will inflate the total and make it seem that everyone in the class is very rich. So in a case like that, where we have one very large number in a data set, it makes more sense to line up the numbers from the smallest to the largest and then go to the middle of that line and pick out that number and that number is called the median. And it represents the numbers because half the numbers are bigger than that and half the numbers are smaller than that. So it's a simple measure of location to use when you have outliers in a data set. But having said all this, the mean is still our favorite measure of location. And when we calculate a sample mean, as we said already, we add together all the numbers in the sample and then we divide by the sample size how many numbers there are. So if our numbers are 22, 28, 25, 22 and 23, the, these are the heights of five trees in meters. We add those numbers together, we divide by five, and that gives us a mean of 24. Sample mean represented by the symbol X bar is 24. So this tells us if all the trees were the same height, this is the height they would be, 24 meters. Sometimes the mean is a number which is not very sensible, like 1.8 children per family. We're not saying that this occurs on any individual situation. We're just saying this is the mean and this 
represents typically how large the numbers are in the data set. Now, when we calculate a mean, and we say that the mean height of the trees is 24 metres, it can create the impression that all of the trees are 24 metres high, but that's not true. So if we built a wall 24 metres high, it would be the same height everywhere. But the trees are not like that. Some trees are taller, some trees are shorter. So we now need to think about the differences between the individual numbers and the mean. We call these deviations. The difference between an individual number in the data set and the mean of the data set. And we want to somehow measure the dispersion. Are the numbers close together or are the numbers far apart? Are those deviations typically large? So we list out the individual deviations. In this case, how different are the heights of each individual tree from 24? So minus 2, plus 4, plus 1, minus 2, minus 1. This tells us how different are the individual heights from the mean. We then square those values so that they all become positive. We then take the mean of those squared deviations, dividing not by n, but by n minus 1. And more about that in just a moment. And then we take the square root of the result, if you like, to compensate for having squared them earlier. And that gives us 2.5 approximately here. So we're saying that the standard deviation of these trees in this sample is 2.5. And that estimates the standard deviation of the heights of the trees in the population. So the standard deviation, it's like a mean deviation, except rather than a simple mean, it's a root mean square. The reason we divided by n minus 1 rather than n can be described like this. If there is only one tree in the sample, if all we have is a single tree, then we have no information at all about differences. But standard deviation is all about differences. And so in order to observe differences, we must have more than one number to compare. And so if we have two trees, then there is one difference available to us. If there are three trees, then there are two independent differences. Five trees, four independent differences. And so the degrees of freedom means how many independent comparisons are available in the data set. And this is an important idea in statistics, the number of comparisons available in a data set. So when we calculate the standard deviation by hand, we would divide by n minus 1. Except it's not recommended to calculate the standard deviation by hand. It's far more reliable to use your calculator in stat mode to do that. The standard deviation is our preferred measure of dispersion or of spread. But the standard deviation squared, which is called the variance, is also a useful measure. The reason why the variance is uh, used a great deal, and you will see it very often in formulae, is because variances can be added together. If variance arises from different sources, let's say trees have different heights for different reasons. One reason being they're different species of trees. Another reason is they're different ages of trees. We can add together the variance due to age and the variance due to species to get the total variance. So variances can be added together in a way that standard deviations cannot. And that's useful. But however, the variance is not a very intuitive measure because if standard deviation is measured in metres, then variance is measured in metres squared. And that doesn't seem intuitive when we're talking about the heights of trees. So standard deviation is our preferred measure. We can also express the standard deviation as a percentage of the mean. We can divide the standard deviation by the mean, and we can refer to that as the coefficient of variation, or we can call it the relative standard deviation. But when all is said and done, perhaps the best measure of dispersion is the standard deviation, and it's a concept we want to become familiar with. In order to calculate the mean and the standard deviation, instead of doing it by hand, it is highly recommended that you use your calculator in stat mode. Now, every calculator is different, but the steps you will follow are these steps, typically. Firstly, you will choose statistical mode, perhaps using a mode 
function on your calculator. You will then begin entering the numbers into the calculator, into the statistical memory registers, by typing the first number and perhaps pressing the data entry key. Then you type the second number and press the data entry key and continue to do that until all of the numbers have been entered into your calculator. When you're finished, there is a key which represents the mean, x bar. You will press that key to see the mean. And then there's a key that represents s, the standard deviation. And you will press that key to see the standard deviation. And when you've finished, you can clear the numbers out of the memory or else maybe choose stat mode or computation mode all over again, which resets your calculator. Now, when we talk about mean and standard deviation in relation to, let's say, a consumer product. If you go down to the supermarket and there are bags of pasta and printed on the bags, it says 500 grams. The average weight is claimed to be 500 grams. You could test that by taking a number of bags and weighing them and calculating the mean weight. If the mean weight is 500 grams or close to it, we say that the filling process which filled those bags is accurate or unbiased. Accuracy means that the mean is on target. So that's called accuracy or unbiasedness. If we weigh the bags and if the results are close together, maybe they're not 500 grams, maybe they're all 507 grams. If the results are close together, we say that the filling process is precise. In other words, the standard deviation is small. So accuracy and precision are two different concepts with very particular meanings. Accuracy means that the mean is on target or the mean is correct. And precision means that the numbers are close together or the standard deviation is small. Now, all the time during this set of slides, we've been talking about sample statistics, the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. But of course, we are interested not just in the sample, but in the population. And when we calculate the sample mean x bar, we do so because we want to estimate the population mean mu. The Greek letter mu represents the population mean. We always use Greek letters for population parameters and English letters for sample statistics. So the sample mean x bar estimates the population mean mu. And the population mean will usually be unknown because it's usually not possible to take a census. And so we rely on a sample to tell us about the population. In the same way, the sample standard deviation s estimates the population standard deviation sigma. Sigma is the lowercase Greek letter s. So mu and sigma represent the mean and standard deviation of the population. And those are usually unknown to us. But we estimate those parameters by taking a random sample and calculating x bar and s, the mean and standard deviation of the sample. You can read more about this in section 1c of the textbook Summary Statistics.